Before we get on to the topic of today's video, I just wanted to let you all know that I have just released my July, August and September photography workshop dates. So if you'd like to get out and shoot with me and a group of like-minded people in various locations around Scotland, and of course learn some photography hints and tips along the way, then head along to my website now where you can see what I've got on offer and book your spot if it interests you. I've got some new places lined up for these months as well as some of my favourite places to shoot and it would be great to see some of you along on those workshops with me. But without further ado, let's get on to today's theme, which is the topic and the importance of foreground interest in your landscape photography. And I've come up with this idea because I did a workshop in Berghead a few weeks ago and foreground interest was really prominent in my images and I was able to showcase why it's important and how it can improve your images. So I wanted to share that with you today and teach you a thing or two. So let's get going. this video I thought it would be good to share with you some images that I took during that workshop that have no foreground interest and although they have some interest in them they're not that great and by showing you these I can show you what's not so good and how you can improve it in your images and hopefully improve your photography as you as you get out and enjoy nature and the landscapes for yourself. So this first image here I took of the sunset and the reason I decided to take this image is because I sometimes like to zoom in and hone in on the on the sun as it's setting and there was this sun flare going up the middle of the of the sunset and into the sky which I missed the best of it unfortunately but that's what I was trying to capture in this image. But as I hope you can see this image is very flat, it doesn't feel three dimensional, it's not got that much interest in it and it might hold your attention for a few seconds and you might think oh that's a nice sunset but then you would walk away. There's nothing drawing you in, nothing making you think and nothing allowing a story to be told in this image and therefore it works in some respects but it's not the best of images when it comes to landscape photography. And another example of this is one that I took just after the sun had set, which is this image, which is, I mean, this image is good in some respects. At the top quarter of the image, you've got these really, really interesting clouds, which is what I was trying to capture in this image. And they are above the oil rigs and the little boats that are lining the sea on the horizon. And although this image is interesting because the clouds draw you in and you think, whoa, that is such a cool cloud and such an awesome sunset. And I don't feel like it really holds the viewer's attention because you can look at this image and think, whoa, those clouds are amazing. And you can see the scale of the clouds because you've got the oil rig and everything on the horizon. So from that respect, it is good, but Foreground interest can make a much more interesting photograph and can really, really lead your eye in. And I'm gonna show you one more image that doesn't have foreground interest in it from that evening and why this image that I'm about to show you does not really work. So this is the image here. This was shot as an eight second exposure and one thing that was really interesting that night was the clouds and I wanted to try and get them in motion which is what I've done here. But the reason this image doesn't work is because again it's quite flat, it's not got that 3D effect and the composition's not that great either. This image showcases how filters can improve or change your work but it doesn't draw the eye of the viewer in and that is why you need foreground interest. And one thing that was everywhere that night was coastal wildflowers. They were lining the cliff top in every single corner, which was fantastic because I used them in quite a lot of images to create that foreground interest and to make my images more 3D and to draw the viewer's eye in. So I'm gonna share them with you now and show you how that has worked and talk you through my thought processes behind the images and why they work and why some of them maybe don't work but why they are more interesting than the images I've just shown you. The first image I'm going to show you is this one here which when I originally edited my images I completely bypassed this one but looking at them again this morning I really like it because it looks 3D. Okay so you've got the path 
leading your eye into the frame, leading your eye into Burghead. You've got the interest of the, the visitor centre, which is the main focal point here, but you've also got some colour and some foreground interest with the wildflowers on the left hand side of the image, which creates a 3D image. Now this is something which a lot of beginners in photography fail, unfortunately, to create in many of their images. What you want in your landscape images is you want to sort of capture what you're seeing with your eye. You want that 3D effect. When you have flat 2D images, obviously your image is 2D, but when you've got flat images that look flat to the eye, they're not that interesting and they don't grab the viewer's attention. This has got leading lines in it, it's got foreground, a middle ground and a background and although it's not the most amazing light and the most amazing image in the world, it showcases why foreground interest and leading lines can create a much more interesting image and just by moving your camera to a slightly different angle you can create images that are going to catch people's attention and where people are going to feel when they're looking at them like they are there and they're enjoying that scene with you. And that's really important in landscape photography because you want to portray the beauty of that place and portray what it feels like to be there. And this image showcases that in many ways. I'm now going to show you two images that I took where I basically lay on the ground and by doing this I was able to capture some of the wildflowers in the foregrounds and the interesting part of the evening for me was the clouds. These amazing clouds were rolling in and that is acting as my background and in these images I've got the visitor centre in one and a pair of houses in the other to act as a middle ground. But again, without the foreground, if I just shot those houses with the sky it would have been quite interesting, but it wouldn't have had the same effect as including this colour and this foreground with the flowers. And what I want to say to you is do not be afraid when you're out with your camera to get down and you know lie on the ground if you have to, to create foreground interest in your images and to draw the viewer's eye in. Because I really wanted to capture these clouds on the night because they were beautiful, they were adding so much interest to the scene and to the eye, they were just like they were mesmerizing. I just I spent most of my evening just looking at them, but to capture them on camera and to make them look 3D and make them look interesting was difficult. But including foreground, including middle ground and including the clouds with that foreground interest adds that ability to capture them in a whole new light and a light which other people can enjoy these images too and feel a real connection with them and feel again like they are there. And one image that I took that I love and that I posted on Instagram which a lot of you um, liked and commented on and said that you really liked it as well was this one here. Now there's no foreground in this image and for that reason it's not particularly 3D but what I wanted to showcase with this is something that I've showcased in many of my images before. This idea that if you're struggling to find foreground, which is what I was struggling with here, you can use yourself or use the objects in the scene to create interest. So if I shot this image of just the bench it would have looked alright, but with me sitting there relaxing, admiring these clouds, which is what I was doing in person, and to portray that in an image, I think creates a sense of reality for the viewer so they can see, wow, these clouds are amazing. And the photographer, me, put the camera up, self-timer, sat and admired them, but on camera. It can create a really interesting and meaningful image that creates emotion with the viewer. So although this image hasn't got a foreground and it's not particularly 3D, it's therefore technically not as good as the images I've just shown you, but you can't always find foreground, you can't always find that interest. So including yourself or some objects in the image can do that. And that is why this image, even though it's not got that foreground interest, it still works. Because it's not just a sky and a bench. It's a sky and a bench with a human being, which we all are, enjoying the beautiful scene in front of their eyes. And I think that is why so many people resonated and so many people really liked this image on Instagram because they felt like they could connect to it and they felt relaxed when they looked at it which is again what you want to do in your images. You want to create emotion with the viewer, connect with the viewer so that they'll like your images and so that you can create something that make, means something to them. You know, meaningfulness and meaning in photography is I guess what we do it for. We want to create emotion in ourselves, but we also want to create emotion with those who view our images. 
create that connection. I really like this image. This image is of one of my participants that were just taking a wee break, sitting on, on the bench, and I'd just taken that image of me, and the, it was quite a moody sky behind her, and then she was sitting on this bench, and then she had the, these, these lovely flowers, as you can see, in front of her. So I kneeled down again on the ground, got really close to the, the earth and the grass, shot this, and what would normally be quite a disinteresting image, now has interest because she's blurred out, creates mystery. You've got these lovely flowers in the foreground, creating colour, creating a foreground. And it's just so much more of an interesting image. And I really hope you can agree and you can see this. So this is me trying to show you how getting down low to the ground, finding foreground interest, it can just transform your images. And this evening we were very lucky because the conditions were amazing. As the sun began to set, the conditions got even better and I, I found it really difficult to shoot. But the foreground interest, again, as you're about to see, added some more meaning to my images and added something a little bit different. So let's move on to now what happened when the sun began to set and when the colours and the sky really began to light up. I'm just going to show you this image here. So this is as the sun was beginning to set. As you can hopefully see, there's some nice golden orangey colours hitting the, the cliff face that I was on. And this image works because you've got the flowers leading the eye in to the, the very nice shaped rock face that's sticking out over the cliff's edge. You've got the sea and the sky in the background to give you some context, the fact that you are on a cliff top in the cliff's edge. But without this foreground and without these flowers leading your eye in, I mean, luckily the way they were positioned on the cliff face acted as a natural leading line. Again, adds a different dimension to your images, makes it 3D and really allows this image to pop now the sunset, the beautiful sunset that lit up the whole sky, one of the best sunsets I've had the privileges of photographing for a while, but just shooting the sunset with the sea does not do it justice. I used to do this all the time when I started in photography. I used to see this cracking sunset before my eyes and I would just shoot the sky with the sea. It, in most cases it's boring because Unless you've got the most spectacular sunset in the world with some really interesting clouds and some really interesting shapes, your image is going to be 2D. It's not going to be interesting. You need some foreground interest. And the flowers, they were everywhere, as I said earlier in this video. I utilised them, which is what we all need to do. Utilise what is there to create foreground. And these next images I'm going to show you in a slideshow because they're all quite similar, so I don't see the need to talk you through them all. They show how just adding flowers to the foreground adds interest, breaks up that horizon, breaks up that sea which takes up miles and miles of your image and adds something that little bit different and because the sun is setting you're getting some nice orange light and nice orange colours reflecting on the tops of these flowers and it just, you'll see, it makes the images pop. there how adding these flowers into all those images created a more interesting shot than just shooting the sunset with the sea below it. And to round off this foreground interest video and the importance of it, I just wanted to show you what I did after the sunset. So you saw at the start of the video that I shot a few images of me zoomed into the sunset. They were nice but they were quite flat, they don't hold your interest for that long. I wanted to connect, I, I really like including people in my images from time to time and I really wanted to connect with the scene and I wanted to show me just enjoying the sunset so what I did was I set my camera up again and I perched on top of this rock and took some images of me just looking out to sea, looking out to this beautiful scene and again it showcases me interacting with what is happening in front of me and just enjoying it. So if you're struggling to find foreground interest, you know, if you're in a location where there's no flowers, there's no rocks, there's no tree stumps, there's, there's nothing to add interest to your foreground, you can use yourself and you can use yourself interacting with the image to just add 
that little bit more creativity to your photographs, that little bit more interest and having a human in your images, it adds that human element, that's exactly what it does, which can resonate with a lot of viewers of that particular image. And the last image, sorry, this night was amazing, I took so many images, and the last image that I want to share with you is an image of my feet leading the viewer's eye in to the pier in Berghead. This is probably one of my favourite images for the night and I shared it on, on Instagram this week and there was somebody that actually commented on it. Let me, let me find out who it was. Let me find out. I can't actually pronounce their name. I'll put it here. But what they said was, interesting one, most of your images, foots are foreground element as well as acts as leading lines. Awesome and wonderful technique, technique. So a lot of people do these foot selfies nowadays and some people don't like them because they see them as quite gimmicky, they see them as that famous Instagram photos. But again, I took a few images in this exact spot trying to utilise the flowers but there wasn't as many flowers there and the ones that were there weren't very nice shapes. So by using my feet it allows me to lead the viewer's eye into the pier and it adds that interest, adds that 3D effect and adds that human element once again. I'm not saying you've got to include humans and yourself in all of your images. What I'm saying is if you're struggling to find foreground, that you just use what you've got. Use your legs, use your arms, use yourself, use objects you've got with you if you want to. Photography is about finding what works for you. But one thing that works for all photographers is finding something that allows you to create that 3D effect and allows you to create emotion with those that are viewing your images and allows you to create interest, to create something that people are going to look at and go, wow. Or if you're just shooting for yourself and you're wanting some nice images of your holiday or your trips around whatever country you may live in, then you've got to do what works for you. But if you're wanting to create images that work, that may win you some awards, that may be able to sell, you might want to put up on your wall, maybe your friends want to put it up on their wall, you need to create something that's a little bit different, that little bit more interesting, and think outside the box. And I hope that this video about the importance of foreground interest has really made you think about how you can improve your images just that little bit more in your future shoots and how getting down on the ground and immersing yourself in nature and finding things which you would normally walk over or walk past to create foregrounds is what makes you a better photographer, allows you to be more creative and in many ways makes you enjoy taking those photographs so much more. As always, I want to say a huge thank you for watching. In my next video, I'm going to be comparing two different filter companies or brands, whatever you want to call them, and seeing which one comes out on top. So stay tuned for that and I'll hopefully see you all then. As I said at the start of this video, if you want to join me on a workshop, because I believe that although you can learn a lot from YouTube videos, you've got to get out there and practice it. So if you want to come along with me, take some images and learn a few things in person, get along to my website now, look at my workshops and I'll hopefully see you there. Thank you all again for watching, enjoy your photography and just do what's right for you. But try and create something a little bit more different, a little bit more interesting, and the results will show. I'll see you all again next time.